Hello, today we're going over film processing. I'll need you to go over the objectives, read these thoroughly, and understand what you should be getting from this class and this lecture. So let's get right into it. Film processing converts the latent image. Remember, the latent image is the image that has not been processed, has not been, cannot be seen by our eyes yet. But we take that latent image and make it into the manifest image. So there's two basic methods used. We use manual and automatic. Manual is your good old um, wet readings where we actually did that by hand and automatic is these automatic processors that have all the gears and actually we put the the, the unprocessed film in one side and it comes out processed uh, on the other side. So the manual processing steps is we have a wetting agent uh, developer, a stop bath that stops the developer doing what it's doing and a water rinse, a fixer that fixes the image and then the washing prevents the hypo-retention of any of the other chemicals and then the drying, drying phase. So the processing chemistry uh, is the most important processing step is the developer. It converts the latent image into the manifest image. It uses oxidation and reduction uh, reaction uh, to, to, to garner up the image. So let's look at these. So um, we have de the developer chemicals. Luckily enough, they are not requiring that you know the chemical name, but you need to know what the component does. So for, let's say, like developer, developing agents, that reduces the, that's a reducing agent. Or we go down to a preservative. What does the preservative do? Well, it controls oxidation. Okay, so learn these, not necessarily these, but you need to know how the component and the function works for your national exam. So let's start with the reducing agents. We have a sensitivity spec, right? We all learned about that. Sensitivity spec, spec gate uh, will be larger when more silver ions are deposited at the spec during the exposure. So the larger gate permits the faster reduction of the internal silver atoms. And when the reduction is stopped at the appropriate time, the silver highlights uh, have accumulated black metallic silver in proportion to the size of the sensitivity spec gate. And what this does is it gives us the varying degrees of blackness, right? Kind of gives us uh, contrast. Uh, if too long, the film will be black. So here's a little diagram that we have with this. We can see the latent image. Just wetting. We're just wetting here, sitting at the, the, the spec gate. The reduction happens, the developing, the developer comes in, and basically we, it develops the, the density, and then we have to put it through the fixer to fix that density onto the film. Just note that the chemical fog uh, affects the film when un unexposed filter highlights are reduced. So uh, compo components of the developer. We have an accelerator, an activator, and a buffering agent. And this maintains the alkaline or the high pH uh, medium that it is in. It softens and swells the film emulsions. The chemicals used uh, can be either sodium carbonate, sodium hydroxide, potassium carbonate, or potassium hydroxide. The developer solution is corrosive and should be neutralized with fixer or diluted with water. Usually both. Inside the developer we also have the restrainer, regulator, anti-fogging, and starter. This restrains the action of developing agents to help prevent chemical fog. These chemicals used uh, can be either potassium bromide or potassium iodide. Now just remember you need to know what those functions are. So when we get into the preservative, we want to preserve uh, the image that we have produced on this film. So what the preservative does is it decreases the oxidation of the reducing agents when combined with air. The attraction of air is so strong that the developer solutions remain effective for only a few weeks. So floating ping pong balls work to reduce surface with air. Uh, deep and narrow tanks are best and should not have more than two weeks supply in the tank. Again, when we used more uh, automatic processors, there is a third party that comes out and takes care of this for us, thank goodness. So let's look into the hardener. This keeps the film emulsion from sticking to the rollers in the processor. It controls the swelling of the gelatin to prevent scratches and abrasions and maintains uniform thickness to assist in transport through the automatic processor. Please note that the hardener that's found in the developer is weaker than the hardener found in the fixing solution. That makes sense because 
at the developing stage, we are at the beginning of this process. The fixer stage is the end part, so the hardeners would be stronger at that point. The chemical agent used is glutarhaldehyde, if I said that right. Continuing with developer components, we got the solvent. Uh, other components are mixed with the solvent to create a developer solution. The agent used is water, and it should be drinkable in quality. Shouldn't be just uh, any regular tap water. You need to reduce as much as they can out of there. Okay, uh, sequestering agent is used for developer solutions that are mixed from co concentrate. Sequestering agents keep impurities found in the tap waters from oxidizing the reducing agents in the film. And the chemical agent is ethylenodiamide tetracytic acid, or let's just call it EDTA. How about that? So the developer solution options are we have ready or pre-mixed. Of course, if it's ready and pre-mixed, it's easier but more expensive, a lot like our food these days. Concentrate. Uh, it's concentrated. It's cheaper but less convenient. Uh, Three-part kit will mix with water but must be mixed properly. And then you have your ready-to-use developer and fixer. So let's get right on into fixing. The fixing agent is uh, talking about the processing and chemistry for fixers is removes the unexposed and undeveloped silver halide crystals. It stops development process and permanently hardens the film emulsion for archival storage. So we have a clearing agent in the fixer component. It removes unexposed and undeveloped silver highlight crystals, so is also called film clearing. If not completely removed, the film will make a milky appearance. We can't have that. Clearing time is defined as twice the time necessary for the milky appearance to disappear, and the chemical agents can be ammonium thiosulfate or sodium thiosulfate. Staying on the fixer components, we have an acidifier, an activator, and a buffer, or a buffer. This neutralizes any developing or developer remaining in the film emulsion, enhances the function of the clearing agent, stop bath to keep the reducing agents from continuing to function. This maintains an acid or a low pH medium for fixing agent, and the chemical agent can be either uh, acidic or, uh, or sulfuric acid. So the preservative inside the fixer, it dissolves the silver, a permanent permitting it to continue to remove the silver from the emulsion, helps recycle the fixing agent. Chemical agent is sodium sulfite. The level that should be maintained should be in the range of 15 to 50 grams per liter. There's a hardener or a tanning agent in the fixer. It permanently hardens the film emulsion for long-term archival storage. It helps prevent scratches and abrasions to the emulsion during the processing and the maintenance to, uh, of a uniform thickness of the film during the transport. The hardening process is also called tanning. Chemical agents can be potassium alum, chrome alum, or aluminum chloride. So the sequestering agent in the fixer that helps prevent the development of the aluminum hydroxide. The chemical agent found in the sequestering agent can be carbo carboxylic acids, boric acids, or borate salts. Tongue twisters today. So the solvent within the fixer. Other components are mixed with the solvent to create the fixer solution. And agents used, the agent used is water and should be drinkable in quality. Just meaning that it shouldn't have a lot of uh, extra particles in it. So, you know, ideally should be filtered. Specific gra gravity should be between 1.077 and 1.11 to ensure proper concentration. So in depleting the fixer, the fixer will become saturated with silver ions from the emulsion. This will not be able to accept additional silver and requires a longer clearing time. Automatic processors constantly replenish their fixer solution to eliminate this problem. And the silver reclaim process must be used. So the washing step. So we've developed it, we fixed it, now we need to wash it off, right? So it removes excessive fixer and developer as possible and prevents hyporetention. Uh, temperature should be five degrees lower. The hyperretention can cause white powdery residue short term and brown stain in the long term. The hyperretention degrades archival quality of the film images. So the fixer solution op options, this is, this is going to sound very much like the developer phase, but just remember we're talking about the fixer here. 
Uh, you have the Aredia Premix, which is easier and more expensive. Concentrate, which is cheaper and less convenient, just like the developer. A two-part kit is mixed with water, and this must be mixed properly. Again, ready to use, developer and fixer, ready to go. So the drying phase is forcing hot air over both sides of the film. This done. This is done as it exists in the processor, and the temp temperature there is 120 to 150 degrees to dry it fairly quickly. This sets a final hardening to the emulsion and seals the supercoat. So we've got our films, we processed our films, now it's time to store them away in the, in the film library, at least we used to. And the films are stored for five to seven years. Um, I've seen it store a lot longer than that, but uh, we're going to go with five to seven years here. Miners who have, have films taken uh, before the age of uh, 18, the hospitals would actually hold on to those films until the the miner reached 18 years old and still hold them for five to seven years after that date. So activity of the developer. So we look at the solution temperature, the immersion times, the solution concentrations, the type of chemicals, the solution pH, and the exhaustion and replenishment of the developer. The chemical activity here, the processing time, developer immersion time should be maintained to within plus or minus two to three percent of the manufacturer's specifications can be checked with time in solution test tool and and a stopwatch and the idea here is that if we keep keep the the film in the processing chemicals and the developer too long it will overdevelop so yes we have to stick to uh, manufacturer specifications here so the replenishment rate uh, values indicate the flow meters should be within plus or minus 5% of the manufacturer's specifications. If no flow meters are present, it uh, can be checked by catching solution in a graduated siller and measured at that point. The chemical activity still is the solution temperature. We're looking at solution temperature. The developer temperature should not vary by more than plus or minus half a degree Fahrenheit from the manufacturer's specification. Fixture temperature should be maintained within plus or minus five degrees of the developer temperature and wash water should be either the same or about five degrees colder than the fixer temperature. So the solution is pH with the chemical activity and the developer, the de developer pH should be maintained between 10 and 11.5. The fixer pH should be maintained between four and 4.5. You can see the very different differences going on here. Uh, and then can be checked by using either test paper or a pH meter. So the specific gravity and the proper mixing, developer should be maintained between 1.07 and 1.1. The fixture should be maintained between 1.077 and 1.11. It can be checked with a hydrometer. Isn't it nice we don't have to do all this stuff anymore? But we have to learn about it. So the hypo retention test, also called the fixture retention test, it should be performed at least every six months. Drop of test solution is placed in the film, on film, and a degree of brown stain form is analyzed. So how do we maintain chemical safety? Well, we go by OSHA, O-S-H-A, the OSHA Hazard Communications of Standards. So the employees must be aware of potential hazards from the processing chemicals. The material safety data sheets, the MSDS, you'll hear this a lot in your career. These are used for this purpose and should be found, readily found, and must be posted for all employees to see. So always look for those MSDS if you're looking for any uh, uh, contradictions or uh, information about a chemical that you're using within your facility. OSHA Personal Protective Equipment, PPE standards, is designed to protect the employees from workplace hazards. A mandate that uh, protective eyewear, rubber gloves, and gowns be provided when mixing or transferring of these chemicals. <clears throat> Environmental Protection Agency, everybody has a say in here. This is the EPA. This requires, at least we had an EPA, requires user of the developer solutions to report a quantity used. Limits the amount of silver that can be discharged into municipal sewer systems and requires special permits for transporting silver laden or cartons, cartridges. Okay, and lastly, just remember the developer is the most hazardous, 
hazardous of all the processing solutions. The developer is dangerous to the eyes and slightly hazardous to the skin as where the fixer is dangerous to the eyes and can be to the respiratory and skin irritant.